Welcome to Predictable Revenue Radio, hosted by Patrick Morrissey, Chief Marketing Officer at Altify, the sales transformation company. At Predictable Revenue Radio, we believe the only way to unlock sustained growth is to deliver predictable revenue by delivering insights, thought leadership, and best practices on how to improve sales velocity. So sit back, all that and more is coming your way as we turn it over to our host, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Good morning, Paul. How are you this morning? Well, I think we're both suffering from the same handicap here. It's pouring rain there, and I can hear a little bit of rain in the back there, too. So, Absolutely. At the end of Q4, for a lot of people, they wish it was pouring revenue, but uh, <laughs> most of us are just trying to stay inside and stay dry. There because, you go. You know, certainly the West Coast is getting hammered this morning. All right. Well, hopefully your guest is, is uh, drier and has a happier outlook than we do here in sunny, normally sunny Southern California. I suspect that she does. Um, there's a, there's a lot of positivity, but she's also part of uh, you know playing a long game and thinking about revenue. So I'm excited this morning to to talk to Carrie Baldwin because the the reality of sales today and and really not just sales but but marketing and a lot of the functions that that drive towards driving revenue are much more science than they are art. And that kind of begs the question, where do you find the people who have the analytic background, the science background, the, the strategic background to actually come in, uh, join the organization at all levels, but particularly in, in entry level uh, positions and produce right away? So to try to dig into that question and get into the art of the possible around building the next generation of sales scientists, I'm excited to welcome uh, Carrie Baldwin to the program. Carrie, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys, and and uh, Paul and Patrick. I'm up here in Bend, Oregon, so we are experiencing freezing rain and snow. So, um, hope that puts it a little into perspective. It's it's probably 25 degrees here. So. <laughs> Yeah. I would yes. take a little bit of rain over that for sure. But uh, th- thanks for for having me, um, Patrick. I'm I'm really excited to be here. Well, I'm I'm excited to to have you join the program, Carrie, because you're hitting on something that I think is uh, increasingly becoming mission critical and has a lot more awareness at the sea level, which gets to um, you know the science of selling, but more importantly, who are the people on the team and what are the skills that you need, which is what I want to get into. But before I get too far uh, forward on my skis, um, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself and, and your background and introduce us to Green Fig, please? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, At GreenFig, I'm the co-founder and the VP of course development, Um, and I'm also a lifelong learner and and, uh, uh, most of the individuals on the the GreenFig team and and the folks that we work with believe in lifelong learning. Um, And my background is I'm a previous marketing agency owner, so I've been around the chicken farm, so to speak, for for 20 plus years. And um, the idea of Green Fig really came around when um, our co-founder and, and chairman, Bruce Cleveland, and I were sitting at a coffee shop here in Bend, Oregon, and really lamenting on the, the you know, the gap of, of, of talent. As an agency owner, I was challenged with, you know, finding good people to come in and, and run the, the business enabling software tools that our clients were acquiring. And um, as a, a venture capitalist, Bruce was, uh, you know, lamenting the fact that a, a lot of his portfolio companies were also challenged with with finding good talent. So, um, you know, what we're really focused at at, at Green Fig and the problem we're trying to solve is around this kind of experience gap and helping people gain the relevant skills and experience that they need to get the jobs um, that they're they're looking for. Well, zoom out a little bit because you hit on a couple things that uh, I'd love you to contextualize for a moment. The one of them being the the people. How do you get the right kind of people? And in, in Bruce's case, thinking about the portfolio, but that's not just Bruce's portfolio. That's everybody on the planet trying to figure out how do I get the right skills and the right people. But how big is how big is the problem? And how do you um, when you you know look at the market uh, overall? How do you size up the the scope and scale of of what you're trying to solve here? Yeah, so there's a couple of questions there. I think where I'll, where I'll start is um, around, um, you know, our focus on partnering with universities. And so let me kind of define what that looks like. Um, you know, universities are doing a really great job of preparing people for life, right? Teaching them those critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, 
um, teaching them for their second, third, and fourth job. What, what they're not doing really is preparing them for their first job. And the, the challenge that we're seeing is, you know, college is expensive and the cost of what families are paying for college tuition, this is, this is really definitely a challenge. And, um, I have a junior in college at USC and, and the tuition is killing us. <laughs> so this is a pain that's very real. And I talk to families all the time and they don't want their, their college students living at home until they're 30, right? So the issue that we're seeing is really around underemployment for college students, right? So if I set the stage and say about 2 million students will graduate this year, but nearly half um, of them will remain, will become unemployed, underemployed, and remain that way um, for a period of time. You know, this is the birth of the of the college um, graduate barista. And, and we're yet 50% of those who start out unemployed or underemployed will remain underemployed for 10 years or more. And you think about the impact that that's having on um, on the economy and on their lifelong earning potential. And statistics show that you know, if you start off at a lower salary, you're going to remain at a lower salary than your peers throughout your your potential lifelong um, learning potential. And so it's really critical, you know, for individuals that are graduating from school to try to get into those higher paying um, job roles, um, you know, so that they can um, achieve uh, higher earning potential. And and so the real rub here, Patrick, is this is all happening against the backdrop of a booming economy, right, where you know, just in the last uh, 12 months, there were 3 million professional jobs open to recent graduates. And so, you know, this is the problem that you're talking about with the, the C-level individuals. You know, they've got these job openings, but they don't have the, the talent um, um, to fill them. And what's happening from the students that are remaining underemployed, they're, they're settling for jobs that don't require college degrees while all of these jobs are sitting open and waiting for students that do have college degrees. So that's the big challenge. You know, and one story here to kind of reemphasize this is when, when we first started starting about this concept a couple of years ago, I visited many universities here um, in Oregon, uh, where I, uh, where I live going to dive into is the, the notion of the applied business scientist, which I think was the second part of your question. It, well, it, it, it was, and what you're hitting on is a, is a real dichotomy that I think is frustrating for a lot of people because I'm looking at this problem from my side as a you know, CMO trying to hire people, and we're trying to hire and grow and, and trying to get the right skills in, in marketing. Certainly, Marketo is just a slice of the marketing stack or the entire, yeah. you know, if you think about the entirety of the revenue team, um, it's one thing to have analytic rigor. It's another thing to have some context around apps, around how sales and marketing actually happen in the real world. And, and so I'm very interested to hear that, that notion that you're talking about here in terms of how do you, how do you build maybe a, a, a business scientist in this case and with specialties in one or multiple of these disciplines? Right. So what we do in our approach, and, and we have multiple classes that we're running. Um, again, we do partner with universities, but also, um, you know, we have people that are uh, looking to upskill or looking to reskill reskill their talents and we we'll work with a number of, of nonprofits to bring a lot of diversity to our classroom. But the way that we look at this and in, in the terms of we think business scientists and, and the applied business scientists, you know, from kind of our definition is really focused on, you know, those people that are in departments that are looking at, you know, business enabling software. So for marketing, for example, Marketo, HubSpot, Pardot, those types of tools for Salesforce or for sales organizations, Salesforce and, and so forth, you know, there's 10,000 or more business applications. Um, and so it's those people that are able to use that technology. And it's not just pulling the levers and dials. It's really, as you mentioned, Patrick, the contextual, it's the it's not just the how, it's the why and really understanding how these tools um, really can help drive better insight and efficiency for a department. So when we approach creating a new course or a new a new curriculum, and, you know, I should give you a, a little plug here, Patrick, as you are, uh, you're joining us as an expert instructor in our sales operations science course, which starts next week. So, so thank you for that. But our approach is we really look at the data, right? So we, we pull from a tool that we use that aggregates data off of thousands and thousands of websites and, and kind of what jobs that they're, what they're looking for. And we build a backwards design approach. So we look at the jobs data. And in, in the case of our decision to start a sales operations science course, 
um, we see that that is high in demand. There are a lot of openings for sales operations. Then we dive in and we figure out, okay, what, what are the skills that are required for that role? Then we create the curriculum, and then we create something called an apprenticeship um, aligned with the curriculum. And, and an apprenticeship is a um, it's our word, it's a word we, we made up that um, that combines the traditional apprenticeship with a mentor. And so what that allows us to do is to take our learners, everything that they learned in the classroom taught by our expert instructors, we actually apply it to a real world project. And, and one of my favorite quotes is one from Benjamin Franklin, and, and he said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And that's really, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're teaching the concepts and then we're giving our learners the opportunity to dig in and, um, you know, and actually do it. And so for, for our sales operations science course, and you'll hear about this um, in the class when you join us, Patrick, is so that'll be the part that our students are working on. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to get into that. And, I, and give me a little uh, context or in the, the audience a little context about, you know, who are the folks in the class? And once they complete these sort of classes, you know, what's their next step in terms of the jobs that they're going after or who's doing the hiring here? Because you're doing a little bit of matchmaking. You're making the world a better place. But you're also the point about mentorship as well as really the application here is giving giving some not just context, but real world experience and being able to work the problems that that I would think are going to help these people be you know productive from day one when they join a new team. Right. That's the hope. And and we also align the curriculum with certifications, right? So it's not just green fig saying, you know, these students have this capability. We're also aligning with, you know, industry identified certifications such as Google Analytics, HubSpot, email marketing certification. Our sales ops course has a number of trailhead badges that the students will be achieving as they go. But the makeup of, of our, our cohort, specifically the sales operations one, but in general with our digital marketing classes, we usually have a good mix of students that are entering the workforce. So really kind of catching them as they're just graduating or just finishing up their internship. And and as I mentioned earlier, also reskillers. So individuals that uh, we work with a couple nonprofit organizations, uh, uh, Paradigm Switch uh, for one, which provides service for military spouses. So they have a conundrum of, of moving a lot and so creating a, an environment for them to learn a job that will allow them to maybe have more remote learning or re- remote employment opportunities. And then also for women that are re-entering the workforce. And so maybe they off track for a period of time to care for family members, to have children or, or do different things and then they're coming back into the workforce. So it is usually a good mix. But when we use the the real-time labor market data, you know, we kind of have identified three real things that people need to have in order to get these kind of jobs. And one of them is, you know, the universal skills. So this is like the baseline soft skills stuff. And students learn soft skills in college. They just don't know how to quantify and articulate, you know, things to employers. You know, the soft skill stuff like communication, teamwork, attention to detail, problem solving, planning, those kinds of things. You know, they, they really need to be able to articulate that they understand that because soft skills in, in a sales operations environment, in a marketing department, in an HR department, you know, you got to be able to function as, as part of a team and be a, be a clear communicator. And colleges are teaching those skills, but the students don't know how to, to articulate that. And then the second area that of the buckets that we see that that employers are really looking at is the functional skill set. So that's really, you know, the more practical and occupationally focused skills that you know that are often developed through the real world experience. And so we see a pattern of of needs around operations management, project management, customer service, budgeting, operations analysis, you know, workflows and things like that, right? So that's mm-hmm. we've got the universal skills, the functional skills, and then the digital skills, and this is the stuff that we're talking about. These are the skills about really taking that business enabling application and applying it to a job. We're not talking about coding, right? You know, coding STEM related jobs. They're definitely out there and there's a lot of focus on that. But, you know, to put a finer point on what we're doing, there's seven times more professional non-STEM related occupations and availability of jobs than in STEM related. So it's, it's really a big, big opportunity. Got it. So let's pause right there on that point, pay the bills quickly, and then we'll circle back. Yep. Okay. 
You're only successful as your customers, and that demands the need for an exceptional sales execution, revenue retention, and customer success. The challenge for most sales leaders and their teams, however, is that their sales process just doesn't match how their customers buy. Sustained growth isn't possible because the revenue team isn't aligned with customers and prospects. With Altify's sales transformation solutions, companies can deliver predictable revenue growth. Yes, we said predictable revenue growth. They can also acquire and retain customers, and they can collaborate across the revenue team to qualify and win new business while delivering value that unlocks cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Built natively on the Salesforce platform, Altify helps salespeople, managers, and executives achieve sustained revenue growth. They help accelerate sales performance for Autodesk, Comcast, GE, Honeywell, Salesforce, Tableau, and United Healthcare. They can do the same for you. Visit Altify.com, just like it sounds, A-L-T-I-F-Y, Altify.com. And now back to Patrick and his guest. Thanks, Paul. We're here today with uh, Kerry Baldwin, who is both the co-founder and the GM of GreenFig. And we've been talking about how do you prepare you know, business scientists and, and maybe more specifically applied business scientists to use the, the GreenFig approach here to really help drive revenue and help you know augment your team. And Kerry was just talking about the fact that Part of the aha of the course is being able to translate three different skill types between universal skills, functional skills, and digital skills into the workforce and to help you know their, their clients be productive and get the right level of job and the right capability where we're all looking for great athletes and we're looking for people with, with ramps if we're in the hiring side of this equation to you know, help us grow our team, serve our customers, and drive revenue. And I think what that points to, Kerry, is if you think about this from the employer side of the equation, what do you recommend to companies and how to think about what are you seeing, I guess, in the market perspective? And what is the dialogue you're having with you know, folks like me or CROs or heads of sales ops or, or heads of marketing, heads of sales in terms of what they're asking for and what they need, what they're trying to add to their team right now that makes what you're doing so important? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. And, and we do talk to a lot of organizations. The feedback is, especially in the tech industry where, where you and I hang a lot, is, you know, churn. So these kind of business scientist roles are in high demand. They're higher paid. They're churning a lot because, you know, there's more money to be found down the street, et cetera. And then you also have organizations that maybe they have the opposite. So, you know, maybe you're a manufacturer or a consumer brand that doesn't have a lot of churn. You have individuals maybe that aren't keeping what's new and current from a job perspective. And so there's two challenges, right? It's, it's bringing in new talent and it's making sure that the current talent that you have in your organization is ready and and equipped to handle the way that the digital transformation is changing jobs and responsibilities at a very fast pace. So, you know, our general recommendation is to make sure that you invest in your people and help them to be their best, right? And this goes back to the mantra of lifelong learning. For employers that are looking for entry level, zero to two year, those types of individuals that they're bringing in, they really need to, you know, kind of check that box. Do they have an understanding of the latest and greatest and what's happening in a marketing or a sales environment? For example, account-based marketing, you know, do they know what that is? You know, are they able to understand the basic concept of SEO, et cetera? But it's one thing to be able to say, you've learned it or you took a course, it's another thing to be able to say you've actually done it. That is the the challenge that companies are facing is they don't have the ability to bring somebody in and teach them. They need somebody to be able to come in and actually start to work from day one and really understand how to get that ramp going without a lot of oversight from other individuals within the department. 100%. So talk to me for a minute then about the, the intersection, and, and you've got a, an interesting point of view, I think, on this, or some interesting experience that probably informs the answer is, what's the role of marketing on the revenue team? What's this look like, the collision of, of sales and marketing, when you're thinking about trying to build the next generation of, of business scientists with a focus on sales or a focus on sales and marketing? You know, how do these two things come together? And, and you have that view as well, right? So, you know, I'm a 20 plus year marketer, as, as I said. So, you know, I've seen kind of this transformation of back in the day, we literally would just throw leads over the fence, right? And then it's like, it's your problem. Yep. Sales colleagues go deal with it. 
but it is really exciting to see where we are now, true and genuine and authentic sales and marketing alignment. One of our Green Fig instructors, Tracy Eiler, whom I know you know, along with sales leader Andrea Austin, uh, they wrote a book called Align to Achieve. I mean, it's, it's a great book. If your listeners haven't read it, pick it up because it really does kind of give practical tips on how sales and marketing can truly work together. But if you think about things like account-based marketing and sales enablement and, and revenue operations, right, which is kind of a we're hearing a lot more of, yeah. of kind of that combination of marketing operations and sales operations. You know, it's a real true alignment of data and teams and really focusing on revenue. I think that we're at this point as marketers and as sales leaders, we really don't have a choice, right? We've really got to work together and, you know, kind of create one focus around revenue and, and maybe the bigger picture. And, and I'm sure that you can validate this, Patrick, in the conversations that you're having, but there really is a big shift on net new revenue versus existing revenue, right? And so it's really focusing on not only are we trying to generate new customers, but we really want to have good relationships with the existing customers that we have. We want them to stick around and grow the relationship with them. And if you think about it, sales and marketing have got to work together in that situation to ensure that there's a you know, super tight handoff and back and forth of how are we handling this customer relationship between sales, marketing, and maybe customer success. I think there's a lot of really exciting things happening right now. I think it's a great time to be a marketer. I think it's a great time to be looking at sales operations and, and, you know, just a, a note here that Salesforce is the technology that companies are demanding four times than any other business enabling application software. So it's just such a great opportunity for people to to jump in and really learn it. And our cohort that we have next week, Patrick, which you'll meet, we have a lot of women in that class, which I'm super excited about because it's just such a great career path. And I'm involved in Women in Revenue, which is an organization really focused on mentoring young women that are getting into sales and marketing technology careers womeninrevenue.org. It's a passion of mine. I thought I would plug it here. Just a really great opportunity for anyone to get into and and have a rewarding and, and lucrative career in these types of business scientist job roles. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited to participate as well as maybe we should have a follow-up um, talking more specifically about women in revenue because I think you're spot on on everything you said. We're uh, about 30 seconds from wrapping up, so parting shot to you, Carrie. When you think about your career and the people, whether it's in context of Green Fig or, or past lives, you know, who, do you, who would you uh, class as a role model or who's the best leader or marketing leader you've ever worked for and why? Yeah, I would have to say Tracy Eiler, hands down. She's a good human. She is a, a good leader. She's a good listener, and she really gets the notion of, you know, marketing can't be off doing what we're doing without really partnering with sales. And so, you know, somebody that I've admired for, for a long, long time, aspired to be like. So uh, big shout out to Tracy. She's awesome. Fantastic. I got nothing but love for Tracy Eiler. I've also got some great, I've been in the Tracy Eiler doghouse stories. So <laughs> that, that's probably an entirely different show. But with that, uh, we're going to wrap it up here because I know you've got to move the market and, and build some more uh, business and marketing sciences. So we'll, we're wrapping up here. Thanks again to Carrie Baldwin, the co-founder and GM of GreenFig. And if you want more information on GreenFig, you can go to greenfig.com as well as womeninrevenue.org. And with that, we'll leave you back to your day. Thanks so much, Carrie. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Predictable Revenue Radio with your host, Patrick Morrissey, Chief Marketing Officer at Altify, the sales transformation company. One of the many shows here on the ever-growing Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you. 